Defense Central attended the Dubai Air Show 2025, recognized as the largest aerospace and defense event in the Middle East, drawing exhibitors and attendees from across the globe. This year's edition was the biggest so far, with more than 1,500 exhibitors, over 200 aircraft in the flying program and on the static line, and around 148,000 trade attendees over this past week. If you haven't already, check our previous videos from our live coverage for the main unveilings, defense deals, and innovation highlights we tracked on site, from the UAE and the US to Russia, China, and Brazil, shaping this year's show. Links can be found in the description below. In today's final recap, we're pulling together the last wave of late-breaking updates and fresh unveilings that surfaced as the air show headed into its closing days, the kind of announcements you usually only catch if you're on the ground. Let's dive right in. If there was one corner of the Dubai Air Show this year that felt like a peek into the future, it was the Advanced Aerial Mobility Zone, where the air taxi race is starting to look less like sci-fi and more like a 2026 timetable. Joby Aviation stole a lot of that attention by flying its EV toll repeatedly during the show, in what was the first EV toll flying display in Dubai Air Show history. It reinforced that Dubai is not just talking about air taxis, it is already testing how they fit into daily operations ahead of a planned 2026 launch. Archer, still limited to a static display of its midnight model, announced a deal with Saudi partners to begin flight tests in the kingdom in 2026. With three air taxi models shown across the event, the message was simple. The UAE, which has been hosting early air taxi trials since the late 2010s, is turning itself into a launch pad for this industry, not only in the region, but also worldwide. While advanced air mobility grabbed headlines, the air show also spotlighted a new kind of coastal transport. Take a look at this. US startup Regent Craft brought a full-scale Viceroy Sea Glider mock-up to the show through the Strategic Development Fund stand giving visitors a close look at a battery electric wing-in ground effect craft that lifts onto hydrofoils and then cruises just meters above the sea. Regent says the Viceroy can carry 12 passengers at up to about 290 kilometers per hour with roughly 300 kilometers of range. Backed by its Abu Dhabi joint venture with SDF, the company is positioning the UAE as a base for future production, maintenance, and regional routes pitching the Sea Glider as a fast, lower-cost option for coastal transport and even search and rescue support. South Korea's Hanwha Aerospace also signed a strategic MOU with Edge Group to co-develop an integrated, multi-layered air defense system for the UAE. The partners said the effort could cover missile defense, long-range precision strike, unmanned components, and AI-enabled command links with localized sustainment and production in the Emirates part of the discussion. Korea Aerospace Industries also signed an MOU with Edge Platforms and Systems to explore future cooperation on crewed and uncrewed aircraft. Airbus and Mubadala added another big piece to the UAE's growing aerospace manufacturing story. They announced a framework agreement that makes Mubadala's Strata Manufacturing a qualified composite aerostructures supplier for the A400M, opening the door to local work packages and a planned aerospace training center in Al Ain. So, how did you enjoy our live coverage from the Dubai Air Show 2025? Let us know in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you want full videos on some of the platforms unveiled this week plus a closer breakdown of the key defense deals, right here on Defense Central.